Okay, so this is the week two uh, lecture PowerPoint. The lecture PowerPoint for week two, all about the shoulder, all about impingement issues around the shoulder. I say impingement, kind of the space flow thing that affects so much of all these different shoulder diagnoses that we're going to look into. In particular, we're going to review uh, this first one is pretty much a review um, shoulder anatomy. I think you hopefully you've already done that one, and then we're going to look at the thoracic outlet, rotator cuff tears, uh, impingement in general, bicep tendonitis, and then put together a treatment plan to address a lot of these uh, shoulder issues. Okay, so let's get into part one here, kind of checking in, um, reviewing some stuff, and make sure you've watched that anatomy le lecture, which is narrated uh, to, to, key up, to talk about some key points in there. It's very important to get the anatomy down before you get before you get into this. So you're not lost. Okay, kind of, kind of reviewing um, from last week. Uh, that little picture there, that doggy on the right, it's just like the dog is going very very fast, and that's kind of what I start to do here. I have a tendency to start going too fast because there's so much to get into, and I gotta get too excited about it. Um, so. Encourage, encouraging just to slow me down. Ask lots of questions in the lab, uh, Zoom and email. Got to keep asking questions so we can break this stuff down and get it so you can understand it. All right, so scapula position and treatment. What did we learn from last week? The scapula is where it should be, retracted, back, abducted, tight against the spinal cord. Um, you have so much more movement. If it's forward, if it's protracted, you lose movement in the shoulder. Remember we did this when we, you slouched, tried to move your, your shoulders, couldn't move them much at all, and then you sat with really good posture, and you had so much more movement in the shoulder. It just opened up the space within the glenohumeral joint um, because of posture, because of your scapula position. So obviously the scapula it plays a huge role uh, in the shoulder. They kind of glide together, especially around 90 degrees of abduction. The scapula really kicks in. If the scapula is not working, it causes all kinds of prob problems with the shoulder, all kinds of impingement problems. So the two are very much scapulothoracic rhythm is what they call it. They're very much interrelated together. Talked about the neck, the forward neck, your neck too far forward, has a cause all these causes all these problems with the scalenes and the levator scap. Um, so again, good posture reduces the stress on the neck. The neck, uh, the head, I'm sorry, the stress, stresses of the neck reduces the kind of the load of the neck on those muscles, load of the head on those neck muscles. We talked about the head being as heavy as a bowling ball, um, really heavy, and with those neck muscles in a compromised position, i.e. forward head, um, it's really gonna put a lot, big strain and cause a lot of pain. So posture is, is really key to, to keeping your neck healthy importance of the scapula trunk on neck range of motion and shoulder function. So we talked about how the whole body moves as one. Remember we had the Coke bottle driver and he was getting shoulder impingement, irritation led to surgery because he had weak trunk rotation. His limited trunk rotation was putting extra torque strain on his shoulder, leading to all kinds of shoulder pain. Case study, you should be having that first one done. Uh, the guy, the student, me pretending to be the student with the neck pain. Should have that one down. That's all from last week's stuff. Uh, let me know if you have questions. Going to be releasing some more this week. A bunch more around shoulder impingement issues you should be able to do after this week's uh, PowerPoint and lab and all that. Here's the space and flow. <clears throat> it's a good kind of graphic showing that. When she is slouched. Uh, inhibits her neck flexors, tights, tightens up her pecs. Everything in the front, interior side is tight. Over here, it's uh, too loosey-goosey. The, the muscles aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. The rhomboids, especially, is not retracting, pulling it back. You get tight upper traps, tight levatus, levator scapula. Impedes the space and flow. Uh, the glenohumeral joint. The glenohumeral Humor head, as we'll see, pushes up against the faucet, impinges, limits space, um, 
and all kinds of other issues within the shoulder joint that's kind of bad news with the, with the posture. It's kind of the bottom line of that. Here's our learning objectives for today. We will answer all these by the end of this PowerPoint lecture today. Um, so the pacing of this is a little bit different. So you got to kind of keep on top of it compared to the work class. The work class is the week that you're doing it is the week that you get the quiz. This is kind of a week delayed. Did that because the, the information is, is so much more complicated. So the quiz on these learning objectives will not be until 916. You can have an extra week in there. So you have about one question from these seven will be in the 916 quiz, along with the anatomy stuff around the shoulder and the scapula. The 99 quiz is on the week one learning questions and just the scapula anatomy, whereas this second quiz on 916 is on these questions and the shoulder and scapula anatomy. Again, all the answers and uh, telling you what's what is, is posted on Canvas. Keep going back to that to see that. Okay, so that's the end of part one here.